This is your lab. This is my lab. So, so In a time when Washington politicians can't seem to agree on whom to put on a postage stamp. Hi, guys. There is one person Democrats and Republicans respect, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Show us what you have here. Okay, so this is a typical open lab. He's worked here at the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases at the National Institutes of Health for 31 years. Pertussis is a serious disease. The man who rallies government when sickness becomes a public health crisis. Regardless of what your ideological bent is, people understand illness, people understand health, everybody wants health. Now we have a devastating epidemic in West Africa, and we're having an epidemic of fear in the United States. He tries to sound the alarm about public health without being alarming. So we've got to continue to try and educate people about what they need to or do not need to be afraid of. Back in 1988, George H.W. Bush was asked to name his heroes in a presidential debate. I think a Dr. Fauci, probably never heard of him. Well, you did, Ann heard him. He's a very fine research, top doctor at National Institute of Health, working hard doing something about research on this disease of AIDS. People with AIDS will not be quiet. Oh, I drugs, treatment or riot. Dr. Fauci began at the NIH just as AIDS was beginning to kill thousands of young men across the country. AIDS activists stormed the government's premier disease research center. The National Institutes of Health is where an AIDS cure might be found. Activists complained that federal programs overseen by Dr. Fauci let promising treatments languish behind rigid regulations. It was a very frightening time. And our government was completely, from our perspective, completely ignoring us and letting us die. So we had to act. Peter Staley was featured in the 2012 documentary, How to Survive a Plague, about the early years of AIDS. He and other activists targeted Dr. Fauci in their struggle to get effective medication. And this goes beyond demonstrative. This is calling someone a murderer. This is putting their bloody head on a stick. Why did you feel you had to do that? We had no time to waste in actually guilt tripping the country about how they were responding to this crisis, how they were ignoring the fact that thousands of their own citizens were dying. Larry Kramer wrote a front page open letter to Anthony Fauci, I call you a murderer, to get my attention. And guess what? He succeeded. He got my attention. <laughs> he got my attention. This isn't a free for all. Let's call it a working confrontation. Fauci didn't so shut out the shouts of his critics. This is Dr. Anthony Fauci. He opened his ears and his heart. It would seem to me that someone who was within the government must have on their conscience these deaths. That is a tough one. Um, it, no, it really is. It's I did one of, I think, the, the smartest and best things that I've done is that rather than run away from it the way many scientists did, like keep those activists away from me, I started to listen to what they were saying. And what they were saying was making perfect sense. And he helped change rules to approve drugs that eventually turned AIDS from a death sentence into a manageable disease. A critic who once put Tony Fauci's head on a stick now believes he should be in a Hall of Fame. I know for sure that when the history of AIDS is finally written, Anthony Fauci will be remembered as one of its heroes and deservedly so. Several presidents have asked him to lead the entire National Institutes of Health, beginning with President George H.W. Bush himself. And I said, Mr. President, with all due respect, I hope you're not upset with me, but I think I can serve you and the country better by sticking with what I'm doing as the director of this institute and leading the AIDS effort. We call this an evolving, emerging infectious disease. And Fauci has been the lead manager in the fight against every infectious disease crisis in America since 1984. You're dealing with something as potentially serious as this public health hazard. Including you SARS and Ebola. Why you grab a seat right here? But he's also stayed a hands-on doctor. He was part of the team that cared for Nina Pham, the Dallas nurse who was treated for Ebola at the NIH. A normal, healthy, and happy life. Nina? When she left the hospital after nine days, Fauci declared her cured with a hug. 
So when she walked out, everyone said, wow, this is the person who was sick, who could have died, and now here she is looking terrific. So it was just almost a spontaneous, natural thing in addition to making a point to the public. So this is President Clinton when he first... The walls of Fauci's office are festooned with photos and honors. I don't get a lot of chances to say this. Could you please show me your Presidential Medal of Freedom? Sure, be happy to. Come on, it's right over here. He received that medal from President George W. Bush for helping to transform AIDS treatment in Africa, which helped save millions of lives. He also has photos with senators, humanitarians, and enough film and rock stars for an after Oscars party. And his coat rack is draped with honorary degrees. Okay, don't count. How many do you have? Uh, 38 or 39, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Fauci works 14-hour days, Saturdays included. He met his wife, Christine Grady, the only place a man with those kind of hours could, at work. She was a nurse who's now a bioethicist at the NIH. We met them at home on a Sunday, their one day off. I think one of the amazing things about him is that he's able to take some terrible things that are happening in the world and make them not only understandable to people, but Make people feel like it's okay. We're gonna we're gonna get through this. What are we doing? Looking forward, Dr. Fauci says he'd like to develop vaccines for malaria and tuberculosis, and he'd like to help discover an AIDS vaccine. That would move the disease he's fought for 30 years from manageable to preventable. People ask me since I've been doing it so long, do I get burned out? I mean, burned out is not on my radar screen at all. If we do something here um, that is an advance in medicine, a lot of people are gonna benefit from it.